I specifically remember I came home one day from playing in the fields with my friend and and we saw my mom and she was with her friend and they were smoking stuff and drinking stuff and getting high. So we saw that and as soon as they left, we went and copied what they did. You know, we picked up the stuff they were smoking and I know that was before I was six, so. My parents separated when I was three, so it was being raised by my mom and my brother, who is three years older than me. We got to do whatever we want, and uh, we didn't have any discipline except we had to be home at night. We lived with my mom's second husband, and for a babysitter, they got a neighbor. He sold drugs. I started selling at 10 years old. But when I was 12, my brother and his friends and we were getting high and I OD'd. I ended up having to get transported to uh, Children's Hospital at Stanford while I was there on the table and I had an out-of-body experience where I left my body and I was above looking down and I had a choice to go towards the light or come back down. And I was going towards the light because it was like, it was like heaven or it was just drawing me. I can remember the room. I mean, the line was flat and all the doctors and they were doing the defibrillator and none of that brought me back. What brought me back was when I heard my mom screaming, he's too young. I had a choice. I could keep going or I could go back. And when I heard her, I went back. I'm 27 years old and I live in a dope house. The plan was to to graduate college and then, you know, launder the money that we were making from the drugs and I didn't plan on becoming so addicted that that became the life. My mom had been in the psych ward and they uh, let her out. I was like, yeah, you can live with me, mom. <laughs> we spent all the time together. I was working in the garden. The addictions and her lifestyle had caught up to her. I was at the grocery store. I told my girlfriend to go to her mom's house because I knew something bad was wrong. I tried to get in my mom's room. The room was locked. So I went around the outside of the house, climbed through the window, and my mom was there. And she had just shot herself in the head. And um, <laughs> it's still hard to talk about, but I'm getting better. It's going to get better. And there's envelopes for me and my brother. And she had planned it and set it all up. And I chose to get high, you know, that's all I knew how to do. So I went and got high, came back in, went and got high, came back in. I spent 14 hours with my mom. Coroners came and got her. and. I'll ha that'll be with me till the day I die. I came back and lived in Madeira with my girlfriend and her two kids for a few years. And all we did was use. I was doing methamphetamines. And once you get on that stuff, it's like you're on that train and it's really hard to get off. For the next 14 years, I was just stuck in my my disease. The sin gets over, it, it rules you. I was ruled by sin. It's June 18th, 2007, and I come home to my brother's house, which I had been living. He had gotten clean and sober, and one of the rules that he had, since it was his house, is that I couldn't bring drugs or alcohol into the house. So I didn't. I was out in my car in front of the house using the drugs and alcohol. I had been there that night. I couldn't get high and I couldn't get drunk. I drank a huge bottle. I was hitting my head on the steering wheel saying, what am I doing with my life? He came out and saw me and he's like, oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna take you to a meeting. And he took me to a meeting that day. This little old lady, she shuffled up to me and I was standing there smoking a cigarette. and. She poked me in the chest and she said, what are you doing with your life? I looked up, I put my hands out, I dropped my cigarette and I started crying. It gave me a glimpse of hope. And when I, once I got that glimpse of hope, I just started going to meetings, doing the deal and doing the steps. God broke 
the addiction in our family with my brother and I. We started going to church. I got married, I had a kid. They were doing the Christmas Eve sermon and there was the star on the side of the stage. The light shined down on baby Jesus. And right then it hit me. I got flushed, I started sweating. I knew right then, I said, it's Jesus. Jesus has been calling me this, this whole time. It took 10 years for me to get from that spot of the sin engulfed life to, to where I am today, where my God before was drugs and alcohol, and he replaced it with himself. When I first got sober, I had this vision that I would be helping people all over and steering kids and people to go towards Christ. The person discipling me talked me into coming to Three Crosses. I jumped right in when I got here. God was using my mother to get me to come towards Him. God has, has so blessed me. He's taken away you know, my drug use, my cigarette use, my alcohol, and now I want to return that and help other people do it. The opportunity came up to run the 12-step program here and I jumped on the opportunity and they had all the supplies and the materials, so I'm going with it. This is what my life's purpose is. I can't keep someone sober, I can't get someone sober, but I can be the instrument that God uses to help the person. There's no better feeling than to see somebody's life change. And I hope to do that for the rest of my life.